Royalcaribbean.com. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out Royal Caribbean blog for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice. It's all waiting for you at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Happy Monday, everybody. Start to a new week and an opportunity to talk Royal Caribbean with all of you. Well, we're going to answer as many Royal Caribbean cruise questions as we can, starting with the most important question. How many days until your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Type your countdown in chat. Let's count down together. I am so excited. I am six days away from Serenade of the Seas to Alaska. Less than a week. A week from now, I'll be on a sea day. But uh, we'll be heading to Alaska. Very excited. Two weeks on Serenade. We're doing a back-to-back uh, out of Vancouver, flying out on Friday. Um, it's It's been a long time coming, going returning to Alaska. Uh, but could not be happier for it uh, heading up there on um, on Friday. So anyway, I know a lot of people have also some great countdowns coming up. We have lots of people in chat. I see Russ. I see powerful female in the chat. Uh, Bill, Zach, Mark Capo is here. Lots of friends in here. And of course, we're here to answer your Royal Caribbean cruise questions. So please feel free to type your questions in chat. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. Shannon in the house on big shout out to shannon uh looking forward i believe to seeing you on mariner of the season i'm not mistaken although uh well i'll be on your coast later this week but you know seattle maybe a, a tad further north of the i don't want to say where you live but from where you live so <laughs> knuck what's going on jojo hello susan lieberman what's going on brenda welcome to vancouver well i'm not there yet i'm still at home but i'll be i'll be in vancouver God willing, on uh, Friday night, Friday evening, uh, we should be there. So we've got an epic super chat coming in. Holy moly. Woo! It is a slap your grandma. It's now going to a super chat. Holy moly. Josh Carruthers. Happy cruise week. Six more days uh, for me and Josh. 55 till the epic Royal Green Blood Group Cruise on Mariner of the Seas. My friend, so overly generous. Like way more. You're always generous. This is overly generous. I don't deserve it. Donations are always welcome here with the Super Chats, but my goodness, wowie, wow, wow, crazy talk. Wow. Um, uh, Mitch uh, has our next question. Do you think they'll bring masks back? I'm not sure they'll bring it back short of a major, like, Omicron-level wave of COVID infections. I know that there are, more, there are more COVID cases right now on land and on cruise ships currently, and I say that based on anecdotal evidence, people basically reporting, you know, they were on the sailing and they, it seems like there's more people reporting that they've encountered that. That being said, um, you know, this is something I think for right now is going to remain a personal choice. You know, we're going on serenade to the seas, as I mentioned on Sunday. And as a family, we've decided we're going to be wearing masks on board while indoors because it's just not, you know, the, it's not worth the risk for us. We want to be able to enjoy the cruise. We're going all the way to Alaska. It, it's not a big deal. I, I did I did it for a year and some change. It was nice not having them, but I'm personally doing that. That's my choice, obviously. Um, and uh, but whether or not Royal Caribbean will bring it back, the answer, of course, Mitch is we have no idea. But I think in my heart of hearts, I would say it would not come back unless there was a significant uptick in cases. Um, again, akin to like what we saw with Omicron back in uh, December or so. But you never know. Uh, Andrew wants to know, are the buffets self-service? They are indeed. Yes, they made that change uh, back in March, a April for sure. March, perhaps. Uh, let's see here. Next question is from uh, Jonathan wants to know, is the check-in process longer with a certificate of recovery? Um, to some extent, I mean, obviously you can't, they're going to, no matter what you do, Jonathan, whether you have a COVID test or not, um, they still have to verify everything. But by virtue of the fact that you can't upload that document to the to, you know, before the cruise, it was like a little bit longer. But I would look at it more like Jonathan essentially like, you know, taking not uh, electing not to do a selfie photo. It's just an extra step involved. But I don't think it'd be major. I would not expect it to be a major issue. Like as long as take an extra half an hour or something like that. So could be wrong on that. But who knows? Uh, Tilly, so excited. We'll be going on one week from today on Quantum. Nice. So I'll see you hopefully somewhere in Alaska. Uh, let's see here. T G R done. We just booked our first cruise. I was wondering if we book the drink package or dining package, do we have to pay for it right away? Or does it add to the cruise here, which we can make payments on? You have to pay for it right away. It's a great question. Um, so when you purchase anything in the cruise planner, you pay for it at the time of, of purchase. When you go in there and you buy it, um, you pay for the whole thing up front. The only advantage, look at the advantage 
is that let's say your cruise, I'm not sure if you say when your cruise was, let's say your cruise is in, um, you know, October, right? If you buy it now, you pay it off now. I like that because that allows you to space out the total cost of your cruise. Like the last thing I wanted or ever want is one giant bill. I like little, little bills, like a couple hundred dollars for the drink package, a couple hundred dollars for the shore excursion, right? And so that way you're not getting one giant bill later on. I hope that makes sense. Um, next question is a super chat coming in from Larry Rickman. What's up, Larry? Thinking of saving some money and trying a virtual balcony. What say you, Larry? Thank you for your generosity, my friend. You know, when it comes to the virtual balcony or not, don't look at it, Larry, as like, oh, I want to book a balcony or a virtual balcony. Look at it like it's basically an upgraded interior room. And let me tell you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote. I don't know if it's a quote, but I'm gonna refer you to one of our chatters in here, Josh Carruthers who usually goes for cheaper room for more money, either for another cruise or for a better onboard experience, like, you know, a drink package or whatnot. There's a really good argument, Larry, that you should go for that inside room, go for that virtual balcony, save the money, and with that saved money, apply it to something else, a drink package, short version, or even better, another cruise. So I say, yeah, go for it, man. Um, Ruthie has our next question. Oh, next super chat. Thank you, Ruthie. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No question. Just want to say thank you for all the great content. 110 days to explore. Happy cruising to you and your family. Thank you so much, Ruthie. I really appreciate you. That's very, very kind to be very generous. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Next question is from Jamie, who says, Matt, what made you cho choose to go out of Canada rather than Seattle? Uh, the itinerary. The itineraries to Alaska out of Canada are. I, I hate to say superior, but they're better. They go to more ports than the ones out of Seattle do. And that was my impetus. I'd done Alaska before. We did it out of Seattle. And it was great, but I wanted to go to more than just Juneau and Skagway. I wanted to have, I wanted to go to Sitka. I wanted to go to Haines. I want, this is a double glacier itinerary. So yeah, we, that's the reason uh, right there. Uh, Shannon, yeah, there's a cruise planner sale this weekend. I believe uh, this weekend. Uh, I believe it is, hold on, let me look it up for you. Uh, I believe it begins on May 24th, which is tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that up so I remind myself to do that tomorrow. Yeah, so new one tomorrow, Shannon. <laughs> nice. Uh, next, we have a super chat coming in from Diamond. Dave Grossi, love the name. Uh, appreciate the generosity. Dave says, Matt, just wanted to let people know uh, I was able to do an email test on the repositioning jewel last cruise using the internet while it's at Europe. It was good enough to do the test so I could fly home. That is awesome news. Thank you so much, Dave, for your generosity and for sharing the information. Very, very kind of you. I see lots of people joining our chat already. Love that. Housebroken with our next super chat. Thank you, Housebroken. How can we dispute a stolen towel charge? 20 days till Mariner of the Seas. Thanks again for all your advice. It really does help. Did you steal the towel? I'm just joking. So this happened to me once, actually. Came home, got the bill, and it was like, what? There's a towel charge on here? Call the Royal Caribbean Crown and Anchor line, Housebroken. So there's a different line. Just Google Royal Caribbean. Can someone in our chat do it for, for Housebroken? It's Royal Caribbean Crown and Anchor phone number. Give them a call. They'll take about five minutes for to process it, and they should have no problem taking that off your bill. So, and don't steal the towels. I don't think you did. I can't imagine wanting to steal the pool towels. Like, how many people have used those towels? I know they're clean between uses, but... Uh, no, I don't. They're not the greatest towels in the world by any means. Uh, Steve, uh, do you have any recommendations for a hotel in Vancouver? Flying in late, just staying near the airport and get a car to the terminal the next morning. Yeah, so we're staying at the um, at the uh, um, what's the name of the hotel? Something place, Vancouver place. What the heck? What the heck is that place called? Uh, Pacific Pan Pacific, not even close. The Pan Pacific. Vancouver is what we're saying, Steve. But of course, when we go there, we're going there for like two nights. So it's different. I don't I don't have a recommendation, Steve, for like a hotel um, for just like, you know, you're coming in late and you just want to spend the night. Maybe someone in our chat can recommend one for you. Uh, Carl, thank you for the super chat. What time does check-in open on any given cruise? 45 days before sailing. Thank you, Carl, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Becky Menken in the house. What's going on, Becky? Becky says, why? Did this day go by at light speed? Dude, you are not wrong. I thought the same thing. Like, I we had dinner, and I was like, wasn't it like 10 a.m., like like 10 minutes ago? Crazy, crazy. Um, Chops or Giovanni's? Chat, what do you think? Chops or Giovanni's, what would you pick? 
depends on the ship and which version of Giovanni's, but I generally pick Giovanni's. But I'm curious what you guys think in chat um, about that. Uh, Mystery Shadow wants to know, are boosters required for European travel for us filthy Americans? I don't believe they are. On, in, certain, in certain countries, they are only if you haven't had your last COVID shot um, more than 270 days ago. So there's some math required. It depends on the itinerary. It's not every European cruise. I'm pretty sure Italy is one of them, but I'm not sure. Look up the protocols, but there are some that do require it if your last vaccine shot, whether it was a booster or not, was more than 270 days ago. So whatever that works itself out to. Uh, William Diaz, thank you for the super chat. Just come back from our Oasis cruise. Thanks for all your knowledge. You're very welcome. Coco Beach Club was worth it. How do you get getting? How do you go about getting married on the ship? Well, Will, thanks for the super chat, my friend. I'm gonna have a glass of water here. The answer is it's kind of complicated right now, William. Um, there is a Royal Caribbean weddings department, but the vendor that Royal Caribbean was using quit, and they have a new vendor. But I've not heard. I don't believe they're they're doing anything in the short term right now. If you want to get married sometime beyond 2022, like in 23 or 24, then you'd want to contact the Royal Caribbean Weddings Department and they can arrange that for you. If you're trying to get married before the end of the year on Royal Caribbean, I would I would instead recommend you maybe try to plan a cruise on or plan a cruise, plan a wedding on your own at one of the ports you're visiting uh, rather than on board the ship. Because again. They just haven't gotten their act together with the weddings department since the change in vendors. Uh, Mark, thank you for the super chat. If a stateroom category is no longer available for regular purchase, does that mean it will not be available for bidding on Royal Up? Correct. Uh, more or less, yes. I would say the answer is yes. Basically, Royal Up is not just an option to upgrade to rooms that are available. It's a what if, Mark. Royal Caribbean uses Royal Up for people that cancel the cruise at the very last minute. So that way, they can fill in those rooms Rather than traditionally, they just wouldn't have been sold because somebody canceled the last week or so. And you'd be surprised how many people do cancel the last minute. So um, basically, when you bid for Royal Up, yeah, I mean, if you bid on a grand suite and there's no more grand suites available that you can see on the website when you do a mock booking, you're right. There's none available. But if one was to become available because somebody canceled, then it would come in over there. So hope that makes sense. Chancha Williams is here. Tony Diaz, what's going on, man? Welcome. Um, let's see. Oh, James just got back from a seven night cruise on Van from Vancouver on Holland America. Nice, poor choice in cruising, but nonetheless, hope you had a nice, nice time on there. Can you bring family radios on the ship? I think you mean walkie talkies. You can bring walkie talkies on board. I don't recommend them for two reasons. Number one, they're extremely annoying to everybody else around you. Number two, they don't really work that well on cruise ships because the fact that everything is metal on the ship and the ship has its own set of radios, which create interference. So I don't recommend them. And again, they're annoying to everybody else, but you know, to each their own. By the way, going back to the virtual balcony question, Josh is I'm not a fan of the virtual balcony. I'll take a regular inside to save the money and then try rail up. So um, Larry, there's your answer right there. Carlo wants to know, is it better to get the drink package when you book or should I wait until boarding, which might be less expensive? Carla, it will absolutely positively be cheaper to get a drink package before your cruise than once on board. Book it now, lock in the price. Do not wait to book it later, or more importantly, do not wait to book it on board the ship. It will cost you more on board the ship. Uh, Palm Tree Lover, do you know what time the bars open at Coco Key? As soon as you can get off the ship, the bars are open, man. As soon as they let you off there, you are good to go. Ainsley, we got a lot of super chats. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. Uh, thank you for the super chat. I'm jealous. Got uh, outvoted for summer cruises when in March. Go to Universal instead. What? A land vacation? Is that still a thing? Why? No, Ainsley. No. Be like, all right, you weird family. I'll see you later. I'm going on my own here. No, that's crazy. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, but thank you for the uh thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh Steven Z with the super chat. Thank you, Steven Z. I don't see a message from you. If I was Steven Z, where would my message be? I don't see it. Steve, um, I'll try to keep an eye out. Oh, there. Oh, well, Stephen wrote this. Maybe this was your super chat. For the money, I'll take Giovanni's for lunch. It's a fair point. I just like Giovanni's better overall. Again, it depends which version of Giovanni's we're talking about, but generally speaking. Uh, Nuke, thank you for the uh, super chat, and I see your message down here. Is there a difference between Coastal Kitchen and 150 Central Park? Oh, yes. Coastal Kitchen is the restaurant for sweet guests. So if you're in a grand suite or above, 
It's a restaurant available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for sweet guests only. If you're in a junior suite, it's for dinner only. Um, but they're not the same. Whoever said you heard the menus are exactly the same has no idea what they're talking about. It's a completely different restaurant. 150 Central Park is a specialty restaurant that costs extra. It's only open for dinner. So they're completely different. What activities would you recommend for an 18 to 20 world group? Same I would recommend for a 31 to 41 or 51 to 61. The fact that you can't drink is secondary. You can still enjoy live music activities on board. So whatever looks interesting to you. I don't know that there's, um, I know I get a lot of questions actually about what to do for people who cannot drink, but are adults, the 18 to 21 crowd. And it's like, well, as my mom likes to remind me, you don't have to drink to have a good time. And there's still plenty of fun activities on board, again, depending on the ship that you're sailing on. But since you're talking about Coastal Cushion at 150 Central Park, I'm guessing it's an Oasis-class ship, and you'll have plenty to enjoy on there. Uh, next question is from Rachel Joy. Rachel, thank you for the super chat. Do you need Visa for uh, Labadee or the Bahamas? You do not. What if you don't get your COVID results back before the cruise? You don't go on the cruise. You need to have your COVID results in time. But, Rachel, um, get the um, antigen test. Better yet, Rachel, get the at-home test. You'll get the results in. 20 minutes. It's super easy. Emed.com. Any tips for first timers that have no idea? Yeah. So obviously you're in the right place. I mean, Rachel, you're here. You're asking the right questions. My advice is a couple things. Number one, this would be very self serving answers, but I honestly believe these are the right answers for you. Number one, watch some of the videos we have here on our channel. We cover a lot of different topics about the cruise experience. It's more of the question, Rachel, of like, you don't know what you don't know. You, maybe you know, like, to ask certain questions, but you can't possibly anticipate every question, right? So that's why, you know, watching videos here on, our, on the Royal Caribbean blog YouTube channel, going to royalcaribbeanblog.com and reading through a number of articles we have there, I really do believe will help guide you and point you in the right direction. But when you do all that, inevitably, you still have a couple of concerns, some questions that are there. And certainly we can answer them here on YouTube, but also our message boards at royalcaribbeanblog.com. You can post messages. There's a great community there that'll answer questions for you. So. Hope that makes sense. Ashley, have you ever cruised out of Europe? I have not cruised out of Europe yet. I was supposed to do one in 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, but yeah. Or 20. Yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, that didn't happen. No, that was was it 2021. I don't remember anymore. It was Norway, but yeah. Uh, Scott Baring, thank you, Scott, for the super chat. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Six days is your first last cruise on Saturday. Me too. So looking forward to getting away and seeing all the great sights. Any word if the English pub was open on the last sailing or be open next week? I've heard the same thing that it wasn't that they basically combined schooner bar in the pub, but Scott, we will find out together because I'll be on the same sailing as you. So hope for the best. Uh, Trisha, can you share your thoughts on grandeur of the seas? You know, it's a vision class ship. It's not going to have all the whiz bang, amazing features that you find on other cruise ships in the world, right? Like the Oasis class or, or the uh, quantum class. But what it's about Trisha, when you go on a ship like grandeur is you're looking for a relaxing classic cruise experience where you know you're going to get up in the morning you're going to you know go have breakfast somewhere and then you're going to go to the pool deck probably maybe go read a book on on your balcony or go down to the promenade deck there's activities in the schooner bar in the centrum you know there's things happening on board the ship for you to do and of course the beautiful places you get to visit on board so as long as you're okay trisha with you know the fact that there aren't water slides or other activities that may or may not be important to you it's a great ship it's just a matter of understanding what the ship offers and doesn't offer. So Mike Wolf, thank you for the super chat. Hashtag YOLO book it. Mike, thank you so much for your generosity. As always, my friend, I really, really appreciate it. Um, are the crew in the buffet serving or are they now self-serve? It is self-serve. It's been self-serve for about two months or so at this point. Um, George wants to know, does the booster count towards 14 days? No. So, George, if you had your, well, if, I'm going to assume you had your regular, you know, the, the the first two vaccine shots, right? And then you get the booster. It doesn't matter, but Royal Caribbean wants to get the booster, but it doesn't factor at all. So it doesn't matter. The fact that you had your original vaccine more than 14 days ago, you're good to go on that one. So, yep. Um, Stingray, what is my favorite thing about Adventure of the Seas? Oh, the helipad is fantastic. I love Izumi on the uh, Royal Promenade, the only ship that has it. So really, really nice. Uh, Diamond Dave Grossi coming in again with the super chat. I see your message. Thank you, Diamond Dave. If I receive a specialty dining certificate for two for my travel agent, do the agent's costs include gratuity to the staff or do I need to leave a full cash tip? Great question, Dave. You know, it's very ambiguous. This is on the not on your travel agent. This is on Royal Caribbean. They never really fully define how that works, especially dining. 
I, as a matter of policy, per, this is my opinion. I don't know this for a fact, Dave. I don't, I'm just telling you what I do. When we go to a specialty restaurant, I basically leave $10 per adult um, on the on the tip. Um, I, I believe the gratuity, the, the cover charge does include gratuity as part of it. And obviously the fact that your travel agent is picking up the cost because they picked up a certificate, it's great. But I just do that and I feel, I don't want to say vindicated, but I feel better about the situation. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Giovanni says, can I bring homemade hot sauce on board? I like spicy stuff. Unfortunately not. Unless it's sealed, you're not allowed to bring uh, food on board. It's gotta be sealed. If it's like, you know, like bag of chips, that's fine as well. Um, we have some, I believe we have one more super chat coming in. Yes, there it is. It is from Tim Moore watching live from Liberty of the Seas. Thank you so much, Tim. And you're the Windjamare. Uh, thank you for making this an amazing trip. Thank you, Tim. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your generosity. Very, very kind of you. As you guys know, the super chats are not required. It's something that we do here as a, as a way to, it's like the tip jar. You know, if I was singing at a bar and I had a tip jar there, that's what that's for. Same basic idea. So, yeah. Um, Brad wants to know, when do I think that they'll, they'll opt out of the voluntary program? Never or not. I don't say never, but not anytime soon, quite frankly. Um, what are the op? What are the uh? Sorry, Brood wants to know what are the odds of getting an upgrade with a guaranteed room? I don't know if there's any odds. Odds requires you to have some sort of frame of reference to be able to say, okay, statistically speaking, you've got a twenty five percent chance. There's really no way to know about it, Brood. It's, I mean, because it's a blind bidding system, it's virtually impossible to know. The chances between one. And 99%. I don't know how much, where it honestly falls. It really depends on a lot of factors that we just don't know about. So when I tell people, if you're interested in really upgrading, call your travel agent and say, hey, I see there's a room available that's cost more. Can I please upgrade to that? And that'll be fine. Keith says, hey, Matt, I'm watching your videos. And in watching your videos, we've learned that we should use book through a travel agent for our cruise. My question is, do they have the same sale prices we get online and book on our own? Absolutely. In fact, they can be even cheaper, Keith, because sometimes travel agents have lower prices because they either have a group space, they're part of a consortia, which is a, um, it's the overarching group of travel agencies, um, and they can have special rates. So it's no more expensive. It'll cost you absolutely nothing more, Keith, but be cheaper. Now, keep in mind, Keith, some travel agents out there do charge for their services, which I don't agree with. And quite frankly, you should never use a travel agent that charges for their services as it relates to booking a cruise. Um, so like, you know, serve, like if you want to make a change in your reservation, some some do that change anyway, but the ones that many, many, many do not charge fees for their services. And uh, in that situation, then it would be no different. And in fact, possibly cheaper to, um, than, than booking on your own. Um, we have a super chat coming in from P and K. Thank you for the super chat. Good to see you enjoying your info. Just at Anthem transatlantic May 2nd to 13th. Perfect weather, smooth seas. Well worth a try. You know, I've never done a transatlantic cruise. I would love to do one at some point. With right now, the kids, there's just no way that's going to happen because it's like every transatlantic is like, you know, between 10 and 14 nights at least. And it's just, it's always during schools, uh, the school calendar. So it doesn't really work out too well. Uh, Michelle, what's your take on Chops on Freedom? It's a great restaurant. You know, I mean, when you're in the mood for steak, it's definitely one of the best places to go. The filet mignon, hard to go wrong with that. So Mike Pastore in the house. What's going on? Welcome. Uh, Jose wants to know, can I buy the key on the ship? No, you must buy it before the cruise. Um, so let's see here. The Teresa McChain coming in with a super chat. Thank you, Teresa. No singing tonight, unless it's a duet with Tony. I don't think that's going to happen, but, uh, not, not, not because I don't want to, but, uh, thank you, Teresa. Always a pleasure to see you in here. David Christie with our super chat. Thank you, David. Uh, Mariner Bermuda this Saturday. I didn't know about the Bermuda authorization until this past Saturday. Will I get it back in time? Paranoia now. I obviously can't promise you anything, but you're doing the right thing. You got some time here. Fill it out. I hope you already have it in and processed and, um, and you know, and, and good. I will be right back. I need to go yell at my children.
and we're back. Okay. Um, next question is from uh, Cats Rule. How many formal nights are there on a five night sailing? One. Um, you have to get to about six nights to get a second formal night on board. So, yep. Andrew, what are the protocols for the buffets? This is like the, no, no offense. This is like the third question we've gotten just in this live broadcast about the buffets. It's back to normal, Andrew. You serve yourself. Are the chairs back in spotlight? Spotlight karaoke bar on the Oasis of the Seas. Yep, you can sit at the bar again. That that the that specifically one, the karaoke bar thing went away back in the end of February, I want to say. And the buffet change happened like about a month or two ago. So, yep. Um, Brett says, as a drinker and, and gambler, solo traveler, how much of $1 bill should I bring for a five-day cruise without worrying about uh, withdrawals or exchange rates? Well, I guess that depends how much you drink and how much you gamble. I would definitely say in the ballpark of 20 would probably be a starting point. I would probably be in that area. I'd imagine. Again, depends how much you frequent those places, quite frankly. So then he says, well, silly question. Why is it named Royal Caribbean if they don't go to other, they go to other places in the Caribbean? It's a great question, Vinny. You know, when the company was formed uh, back in the late 60s, Originally, they had one ship and it only went to the Caribbean. And back then, really, you know, um, cruise ships were you know, were really limited to the Caribbean. I'm not saying they weren't ship cruises, obviously, in the Mediterranean or elsewhere. But when Royal Caribbean began, uh, the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, they began sailing out of Miami, Song of Norway, and operated out of there. And they operated out of uh, out of the out of Miami to the Caribbean for many, many years before expanding um, outwards. I quite frankly don't even know when they which ship went first out of the Caribbean, but um, that's essentially why. So it's a callback, I guess, from from then, and they just kept it around, I guess. Uh, next question is from uh, Susan wants to know, best area to go in the Caribbean in November, December? I mean, the, that's a wonderful time of year to go. I say Southern Caribbean, then it's not quite as stifling hot. So, yeah. Samantha, what is the key? The key is a um, VIP access program you can buy into. Um, you buy before the cruise. We've done some videos, Samantha, that go more in depth about the key here on our channel. So, um, let's see. We have a super chat coming in. We got two of them. Wow, holy moly! Uh, Brian Blyer, thank you so much, Brian. Really appreciate your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Matt, thanks for all the great videos. Was on Symphony a couple weeks ago, and one of and one of Intel for those sailings with Ultimate or Three Night Dining Package. Go to Uzumi first to make reservations. The good dining times go quick. 100% agree with Brian's uh, summary there. Brian, thank you for your very generous super chat. I don't deserve that, but thank you. Um, I, if you have a dining package, you absolutely need to go make reservations first. And Izumi, especially Hibachi, goes like that. So yeah, if you have a dining package and you want to eat Izumi Hibachi, sushi, not so much. There's plenty of seating for that. But because seating is very limited for Hibachi, if you want to do that, Go on the first day, make a reservation immediately there. Um, I would definitely uh, agree with Brian on that one. That is super, super important. And PNK, thank you for the super chat again. Very, very generous of you. Understandable with taking families on transatlantic cruises. However, you might consider a 14-day med out of Southampton. Lots of families. This is true. I mean, I mean, outside, if it wasn't for COVID, I think we would have already been doing that, PNK. The problem for us, I mean, first of all, I wanted to see what the European cruise season was like this year before committing to a European cruise. So we'll get there eventually. Um, I, I know we will. That's not. It's just for me. It was COVID. Unfortunately, put a like like all of our plans put a major roadblock in uh, in in kind of moving there. Otherwise, if not for COVID, I'm sure by now we would have hit. You know, maybe this would have been our summer European cruise, something like that for Mediterranean. So appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Carl wants to know what's the easy way to find protocols area for vaccines for ports of call. Um, you don't have to worry too much about that. I'm not aware of any port that Royal Caribbean goes to in which they're different than they are here on the cruise ship. Um, what you want to do, Carl, is you want to go to Royal Caribbean's website, you know, royalcaribbean.com, top left corner, there's a health protocols link. Click on that. And about halfway through the page, there's a link to find the protocols for your sailing. And then you pick where you're sailing from and it lists them all there. And it's it's pretty easy. That's that's the go-to place. And And honestly, I'll expand this question. It's also why I don't, try to answer too many questions about protocols because you know answering them now they could change tomorrow quite frankly so i just don't want I mean, you can always get the most up-to-date information about protocols on royal caribbean's website 
Uh, Monica, I have no idea which uh, dock they dock in, in Halifax. I've never been there before, so I am not 100% sure. Maybe someone in our chat uh, knows the answer to that one. Uh, John says, check-in is open, but you can't pick a boarding time. Um, I would, John, try... Uh, that's strange. Um, I would try... I don't know if, if you're using your phone, go to the Royal Caribbean website, try doing it over there just to see if you get the same result. Um, or vice versa, if you're on the website, like on your computer, go to your phone and try doing it over there. So, Jacob, in my eyes, what's the best restaurant on Wonder of the Seas? Well, I really like Mason Jar because it's different. Azumi Abachi is always a fan favorite, Jacob. I love that one. So either of those would be really, really good. Uh, Eric, how soon can we reserve a show on board? Um, you can't book. You can book it once you get on board, Eric. As soon as you get on board the ship, connect to the Wi-Fi. And you're good to go. Unfortunately, you cannot um, you cannot book entertainment before the cruise at the, um, since cruising restarted. Hey, Jordan, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Emily is wondering if you're familiar with Margaritaville out of West Palm Beach and if it's worth it. The resort, I have not been there. I've heard nice things about it. So I don't have anything bad to say about that place. Um, if you're looking for a pre-cruise pre -cruise hotel, you know, like all Margaritavilles, I think you're paying... They're, they're not pricey or expensive. You're just paying a little, probably a little bit more than a comparable Hyatt or something else because it's the Margaritaville name and shtick that comes along with it. But I've not heard anything bad about it. So that's a good sign, you know, if you want to look for a pre-cruise day. Uh, powerful female, any chance to go back to booking shows on the cruise planner? I certainly hope so. I mean, the answer has got to be yes. I don't know that for a fact. I've not heard of any plans to go back to that. Um, I don't know why they went away with it. Um, and certainly have not gone back to it since. Maybe just to have consistency because before COVID, you could only book shows before the cruise via um, oh, just on Quantum and Oasis class ships, which I can understand why that would be confusing. So maybe that's the case. Um, let's see here. Next question is from, hey, Pascal's here. Um, Bill says, what are the requirements for cruising into Canada, we'll be on Oasis in 15 days from Bayonne. Um, again, check the protocols, Bill, on Royal Caribbean's website for that. I'm not aware of uh, what they, if they're any different. Um, the Arrive Can app is probably the biggest thing, Bill, that you may have to fill out. Any cruise ship that visits Canadian ports, whether you get off the ship or not, you need to fill out the Arrive Can app um, up to 72 hours beforehand. We have an article on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com about a walkthrough of the uh, Arrive Can app. So, yeah. Uh, Victoria wants to know where can we get the COVID test done prior to cruising? Well, I'm not sure where you live or where your cruise ship is, but there's a couple of ways. Number one, you get a test done in your hometown, like at a CVS or Walgreens or doctor's office, something like that. My preferred way, my recommendation to you is to go to emed.com, buy the at-home tests and use those. They're super easy. It is the exact same process of doing it at Walgreens or a pharmacy. And a lot of people think, well, no, 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 I'm going to go to the pharmacy because I'm going to screw it up. I don't trust myself. I don't want to do it myself. Guess what? It is exactly the same process. And you have a video proctor there who guides you the entire way. So it's really, really easy. Um, let's see. Next question. Uh, Amber, do they use cash in the casinos? They do. They take a lot of my cash in the casino. Yes, it's, it's all cash in the casino. Um, let's see. Boy, there's a lot of questions here. Holy moly. Don and Judy. Hello and welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, Bill says, I know I can bring two bottles of wine on board. But what if I'm doing a back to back? Can I bring four? It's, it's a gray area, Bill. Um, I've certainly heard of a lot of people who basically bring four. And if they, if the security questions you, then they say, Hey, I'm doing a back to back. Here's my set sale pass for next week. And then maybe they'll be allowed to. I mean, there is no, let me put it this way, Bill. There's no written policy that actually, in my, that I've ever seen or I'm aware of that actually explains that and says that for this particular scenario. But I've definitely seen people who've done that. The alternative, Bill, of course, is between cruises. You could get off the ship and go get wine and come back on board. But who wants to do that, right? I would probably do the first thing, like bring four, have the second set sail pass. So you can show security when they question you on it. I did that once many years ago, and as soon as I showed it to them, they're like, okay, no problem at all. You're good to go. So, who knows? Uh, we have a super chat coming in from, oh, we got two of them. I missed uh, two. Uh, GS Adventures. Thank you for the super chat. 
Thanks for all your information. Thoughts on Explorer of the Seas. Only sailed Oasis and want to adventure out. It's a Voyager class ship. It's a fun ship. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I get a lot of questions about, you know, Matt, what do you think of this ship or that ship or this ship? There's not one ship I wouldn't say, oh my God, don't go on it. It's a mistake. I love all the Royal Green cruise ships. When it comes to any ship, and because you're coming from Oasis class and you're going to Explorer, I think you know this, but I'm going to say this anyway. There are some differences between the two, meaning there are features and amenities on Oasis that do not exist on Explorer. As long as you're okay with that and understand that, it's fine, right? The biggest mistake I see is people who assume that all the Royal Caribbean ships are pretty much the same. And so they'll go from like Oasis to Explorer. And then they're like, where's the boardwalk? Where's the zip line? Where's the, you know, where's the full Broadway show? Well, they don't have like Voyager or Explorer doesn't have that. Okay. But they have other things as well. They do have water. Well, not water size. They have Flow Rider. Um, they have the rock climbing wall still. They have other things to do and entertainment every night, but it's a different experience. So just be okay with that one. Um, let's see here. Michael, any recommendations for COVID tests for flight back to the U S from Europe? Uh, yeah, Michael, get the EMED test. You can take them in Europe. Just bring, you can do the test in Europe over Wi-Fi. They don't care where you do the test, but if you're an American, I would definitely do the EMED test. No question about it. Hey, Smokey Bandit's got a great tip here about the, those EMED home tests I talked about. Um, you can get the, um, reimbursed to your, uh, to your insurance. Most policies do do that, which by the way, you reminded me, I actually have to do that with the latest batch I purchased. So, um, yeah, very good point. Uh, there's Anthony Harris in a super chat. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Matt. We love all your cruise content on freedom next month and staying pre-cruise at the Hilton downtown Miami. Anytime we're getting there from the airport. Yeah. Uh, Lyft or Uber. I do that every time, Anthony. Lyft or Uber. It's easy. It's convenient. It's relatively inexpensive. That's what I would do, 100%. Um, fanfic rocks. What are some corners that roll could be in that cut that really gets under your skin or annoying you? Corners they cut? Um, I don't know. It's not really, it's not really corners they cut. I don't think that's a, a fair thing to say. What always bothered me always was just policies that are, um, that are, that are, um, uh, what's the word? Um, policies that are not. Oh my God, I, there's like a word, there's a phrase that I always use and I'm like blanking on what it is. Basically policies that are not applied all the time or, or, or you know, across the board, right? Like if you have a policy, like classic example, I'll bring something up that we've we've talked about recently on realgreenblog.com, chair hogs, right? If you leave your belongings on a chair for more than X amount of minutes, there's a written policy that says that Real Green will take your stuff and, and move it to the desk and open up the chair for somebody else. Yeah, they don't really do that. They do it sometimes, but very infrequently. And that really bothers me, so... I wish they, if they, if you have a rule, enforce it. And if you don't, if you're not going to enforce it for whatever reason, then get rid of the rule. That's fine. You know, either way, consistency. That's the key right there. Uh, we have some time for some more super chats coming in. I'm going to get a drink of water while I catch up with them. Uh, Michael Gilroy. Thank you. Sailing on Oasis June 10th. When does online trip planner sales stop for beverage packages, excursions, other stuff? Up to 48 hours before your cruise. Michael, if you're on the website, the Cruise Planner website, scroll all the way down, it'll tell you the actual time. It's usually like 11.59 p.m. on two days before your cruise. So basically about 48 hours beforehand. Uh, Elbrog, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. I don't see a message from you, Elbrog. I'm going to... Inconsistent was the word. Thank you guys for correcting me on that one. I'm just blanking on that. Um... What am I looking for? Um, I don't see a message here, but thank you, Elbrock, for your generosity. Nonetheless, sometimes people just do the super chat, and I appreciate it. Uh, Jordy says, hey, on September 24th, me and my family are going on Symphony of the Seas for the first time. Any tips? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're basically what you're doing now. Start learning about what there is to do on your cruise ship, activities, things of that nature. There's a lot of information you can glean from the internet. This is the wealth of it, and we have a lot of information at royalcaribbeanblog.com. So learn about your cruise, what you can do on board, um, what you can do in port, those kinds of things. Jester, thank you for the super chat. What is the usual capacity for December cruises? By December, it should be back to 100% for sure. Uh, Jester, in fact, Royal Caribbean has said that they're aiming to get back to 100% by the summer. So by your December cruise, it should be more or less, barring some unforeseen circumstance, uh, back to the way it was before COVID. Uh, and uh, Jordan, thank you for the super chat. Alexa is wondering if there's a limit at the buffet. There is not. Feel free to uh, engorge yourself if you'd like to. 
Erica wants to know, are there more specific ships that are more adult friendly than others? I don't know what you mean by adult friendly. If you're inferring, are there ships that have less kids on board? No, Royal Caribbean is always, a, has been, is, and will be a family cruise line. That's the bottom line. There's always going to be families. And what actually, more specifically, what I love about Royal Caribbean is that it's not just one age group or another. It's not all kids. This isn't Disney Cruise Line. It's not all adults. It's not Holland America, right? It is a mix of all ages. You have a good assortment of them. So it never feels like, oh, I'm on a ship full of, insert, you know, gender, or, or sorry, not gender, age uh, age groups here, right? Um, that's the I think that's a beauty of Royal Caribbean. Now, certainly, Erica, if you were taking a certain itinerary, like a, you know, a cruise that is more than 10 nights, generally speaking, tends to have far less children because, you know, most families don't want to take off that much time and or they're in school. So generally speaking, longer cruises like transatlantics, repositioning cruises um, are examples of that. So uh, Marina wants to know, how can I get points faster with my crown and anchor level up? Can I only I can only cruise one to two times a year, so my points don't add up as fast for people who cruise often. Uh, the only way to really make it work faster, Marina, would be two things. Number one, for you to cruise in a suite, and number two, for you to cruise in a suite by yourself. That is the fastest way because when you sail in a suite, you get double points. When you sail in a suite by yourself, you get triple points. That's the way to really move up the system quickly. Um, R and R hubby sailing on uh serenade soon. Me too. I'm going on serenade on Sunday. Do they have a sail away party? Um, I'll let you know when I get on board. You know, usually the sail away party is gonna be more um weather related than anything else, but traditionally the Royal Caribbean does have one. Um, but I will be on board to let you know on Sunday. So um Catherine says, Tell folks to watch your informational YouTube video you made regarding home testing using EMED. What Catherine said. Yep, we did a video all about that. It's really easy. So thank you for the shameless plug, Catherine. I appreciate it. Uh, Eric wants to know, do you have to pay to use the Royal Caribbean chat feature in the app? Yes, you do. Yes. Um, if so, what other apps work well for onboard Wi-Fi chat without internet? None. Um, you either have the internet or you don't. You either have the internet, you have the chat feature, or you don't have a chat feature at all. So you either buy the internet package, Eric, and then you can use, you know, Messenger or WhatsApp or whatever, or use the Royal Caribbean app, so. Michael Gilroy, again with a super chat. Michael, thank you so much for your generosity tonight. I've been on Freedom and on Oasis. What is What should I do that isn't on Freedom but is on Oasis? Oh, I see what you're asking. The new... No, actually, they both have them on there. No, they don't. The new Giovanni's um, Italian Kitchen is on Freedom. Do that. Go eat dinner at Giovanni's Italian Kitchen. That restaurant does, does not exist. They have a Giovanni's, but there's a whole new menu on Freedom of the Seas. So, yeah, definitely the way to go. Pineapple Makani going on Liberty in July. When should I get my COVID test results? Well, uh, Royal Caribbean tells you the answer. If you're fully vaccinated, you must get your results up to two days beforehand. If you have unvaccinated kids, then up to three days beforehand. So I would do that exactly on the nose. So if, as an adult that's fully vaccinated, you want to get your antigen test done two days before the cruise. So if you cruise on Sunday, ship sails on Sunday, get your test done on uh, Friday. You can get it on Saturday too, but get it on Friday so that way you get the results quickly if you have unvaccinated kids the result will then be take the test on thursday then of course unvaccinated kids have to do a pcr test um gabriel's is any chance you could win a free cruise um it does happen they're actually i've actually written an article on realcarbonblog.com how to win free cruises they do exist they're very few and far between sometimes like there may be a local contest in your town but through real caribbean if you're on board the ship there's usually bingo, which you have to pay for bingo, but you could win a free cruise there. Um, there are a couple of ways, but be very leery, Gabriel, of uh, free cruise giveaways because free is usually pretty uh, relative. And a lot of, there's a lot of scams on the internet. So, you know, make sure it's legit. The Tony Diaz. Tony, my friend, thank you for the super chat. I am sure that you want me to sing a song now for you, but Therese asked me not to, so. Maybe next time, Tony. Thank you for the super chat, Tony. Appreciate you. Uh, we have our next super chat coming in from DSM1233456. Thank you for the super chat. Going on Mariner out of Port Canaveral. Any tips for where to stay, how to get there from Orlando? Uh, to get there, just to Lyft or Uber. Lyft or Uber. It's so much easier and convenient and cheaper than anything else. Lyft or Uber. Um, where to stay? The Country Inn and Suites is really nice. There's a Radisson. Both are great for like one night. It's totally fine. 
Also, is a full uh, is a full suite on Mariner worth it versus a junior suite? It really depends on how much more it is. I generally say if it's less than a hundred dollars a day total, you know, so for seven night you're doing, I don't know if you're doing seven night cruise or whatever, but if it's less than a hundred dollars a day total, probably, but you know, you know what? At the end of the day, DSM, sometimes you just want to treat yourself. Right. But I think everybody's definition is different because everyone's got different financial situations and $500 can go a long way for a lot of people. So, you know, it's, yeah. Um, let's see here. Jeff Luddick. Jeff, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Do they allow casts in the pool? My son broke his ankle. I think the bigger problem is that it's not so much that they allow casts in the pool. You're not supposed to get that thing wet, right? It's going to like degrade and stuff. I'd be more worried about that. I don't, to answer your question, I don't believe there's a policy on that. I've never seen it on any sign, but I mean, unless you, oh, I'm assuming Jeff, you have like some super duper cast. That's not the old school one. Um, but I've not seen anything there. Fanfic Rock says, uh, quarters have been cut, for example. There are, uh, I don't know what X restaurants are, have been cut back on the quality of food. I disagree. With, I mean, the quality of food, that's a subjective phrase, Fanfic Rocks. I, I disagree with that. Uh, quarters cut kind of the quality of service, the rooms that are lacking. I don't know if the rooms are lacking. I disagree with that one. In terms of quality of service, I mean, there is a fair argument. I do believe right now, because the ships are not fully staffed, this is a true of like everywhere you go. Like there is a staff shortage everywhere, worker shortage, right? You go to your local drive through um, Disney World, you go on a cruise ship. I mean, this is a reality of it. That's not a corner that's being cut intentionally. That's a reality of the world we live in. As for the food, sorry, I disagree with you. I don't think the quality has been cut back at all. I think they've been pretty consistent. You know, in the main dining room, you've got what I believe to be, you know, most food usually is usually in this, you know, good to very good category with a couple of things being, you know, maybe like, like a, ooh, and a couple of things being, hey, that was really, really good. I enjoyed that quite a bit. And then in terms of the rooms being lacking, I don't even know what that means. Um, I think the rooms have always been pretty consistent. In fact, on the newer ships, you know, Odyssey, Wonder, Symphony, um, Ovation, the cabins are fantastic. I love the new look of the cabins on Royal Caribbean, um, you know, with, with your newer ships. So, again, different strokes. I mean, these, this, they're subjective is what I'm trying to say in many of these situations here. But I don't think you can make a statement that – a, a broad statement like that that applies across the plane. Say yes, this is the case across the way. It's just not true at all. Um, and, and again, two out of three of those are subjective personal opinions, which you're entitled to. Totally fine. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying I don't agree with them, and I certainly wouldn't repeat them as, oh, everybody listening, these three things are a problem. The second one is a problem, and I talked about that. I wrote an article about that, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, I don't know what I'm calling you, Jeff. Fan thick rocks. I wrote about that uh, last week in that article I wrote about the big problems that we're looking is facing. Um, now they have the whole fleet back. So, I mean, yeah, hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Next question. We have a super chat coming in from Earl going first cruise in April, wondering where to get COVID tests in Tampa or what's acceptable. So, uh, you, there's a couple things you want to do about that, Earl. Uh, you have to, if for anybody who's vaccinated, you need to have either a PCR or antigen test, get an antigen test up to two days before your cruise. Earl, I would go to emed.com, order some tests from over there. It's super easy and convenient. You can do from the comfort of your home. Very easy to do that. Emed, E-M-E-D dot com. If you have any um, unvaccinated kids, they can't use those tests. You have to go to like a Walgreens or a CVS to get a PCR test up to three days before the cruise. So up to two days before the cruise for you, not counting the cruise day uh, as the vaccinated adult, I'm assuming. And then for the any unvaccinated kids below the age of 12, then they have to do a PCR test um, up to three days before the cruise. And in the case of both, get them both done right on that, you know, two days before or three days before. Don't wait till closer in. Um, Ashley wants to know, how is the ship's Wi-Fi? It depends on the ship. Some are certainly better than others. If you're on a Oasis or Quantum Class ship, generally speaking, it's the better, faster internet service. It also depends, Ashley, what you want to do on the internet. And if you're just checking Facebook, it's fine for most things, you know? It's just a question of what you're doing on there. But, Overall, it's much better on the newer ships. Denise, thank you for the super chat. How do they check COVID vaccine cards? My card is really jacked up after use. It's a good question. So there's a couple of things. Number one is you probably already are, are aware. Um, they, um, you can upload a photo of your vaccine card, you know, via the Royal Caribbean app, and closer to your sailing, they'll validate. It. Actually, mine came back. Uh, they they denied it. My my co my COVID my vaccine card, and it was I was like what. Because my family, my wife, no problem at all. 
Mine got rejected. And I looked at it is because I accidentally put Pfizer instead of Moderna as the vaccine provider. And there you go. So I resubmitted it and I haven't checked it today, but I hope it's gone through. Uh, but basically they have a, they have, they, they basically said that they have a methodology. They won't say what it is in an effort not to allow people to game the system, but they have a methodology for verifying it. So as long as you can read the information on there, Denise, and you know, I think you, I mean, you know, if as long as you're not lying about it, which I don't think you are, and it's, 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 you can read it. I would imagine you'd be okay. You know, it's not, there's no, uh, they don't give you bonus points if it's in pristine condition. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Evan says, uh, COVID tip, the EMED antigen at home test is different from the antigen self test. Make sure you check the label before buying. Yeah. Basically the, the Abbott test you buy at in the store doesn't, doesn't work. You need the one that's proctored is the key. And you're absolutely right about that one. So, uh, let's see here. Tommy English in the house. Tommy, I don't know if you're a 202, you graduate yourself. But I just want to say a big shout out to all the guys over in the firehouse today. And Mr. Cook and Yo, also there. Appreciate it. It's a real website and a real guy. Tommy English, I've heard many, many stories about you and Fat Pat. I hope you're doing well, my friend. And uh, thank you for saying hello. Where do I get the Royal Caribbean Monopoly game? eBay. It was a giveaway that Royal Caribbean had um, when Independence of the Seas had her amplification in 2018. And um, it was a giveaway they gave the travel agents one time, never made any more. So eBay is basically how I did it right there. Uh, Casey, do you recommend using your cell phone provider versus Royal Caribbean data plan? No, God, Casey, trust me, do not. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not use your cell phone provider to use your data on board the ship. When you get on board the ship, call your family, say, hey, I'm on board, I'm, I'll tell you later. Put it into airplane mode. And then activate the Royal Caribbean, you know, Wi-Fi. You'll be charged an arm and a leg for uh, cell phone use on board. And some providers like AT and T have a cell phone package for cruise ships. It's a complete ripoff. You get they're useless. I do not recommend them at all. The Wi-Fi package way better. And yes, you can still make phone calls with the Wi-Fi package on your phone. Um, Google um, Wi-Fi calling for how to do that on your phone. Uh, we have some. Do I think I have a super chat? Oh no, it's actually. I answered Casey's questions. So Casey, thank you for the for your generosity. Thank you, thank you. I hope that answer helps you out there. Um, Andrea Langley, it's good to see you. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Next question is from Jeff Hillary. Hi, Matt. Sailing uh, out of Miami on Saturday. Is there a place online to find out what time our ship is scheduled to arrive at the port on our cruise? There's not. Um, there are websites that that allegedly have that information, but they're 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 hit or miss. I mean, they're they're not gonna give you times anyway. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I think maybe I'm trying to remember Port Miami. So there's a Port Miami website, Jeff, which since you're within a week might have the time, but it really is based on so many conditions. Um, I don't know the answer to that one. I would check. The only place I could check, Jeff, would be to go um, uh, to the Port Miami website and see if there's some sort of schedule on there. But other than that, I'm not aware of anything else. Uh, next question is from uh, Gl- Chris, who writes, Hey, Matt, with the staff shortages and now limited to no lunch venues, especially restaurants, is the ultimate dining package still worth the money? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I still think it's worth the money. I never really factored lunch much into it. I was looking at it purely from a dinner standpoint, and I absolutely do believe it's still worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. As long as you eat at a specialty restaurant every night for dinner, you will definitely get your money's worth out of it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Keto wants to know, is it good to have a balcony versus an ocean view room? Boy, that's a really loaded question, Keto. We could spend hours talking about this, and I'm sure there's about half the chat would tell you one thing, half the chat would tell you another thing. I think ultimately, Keto, it boils down to um, uh, your, your budget, how much more it costs. Um, it's really nice to have a balcony. I wouldn't pay thousands more for it. It just depends how much more money it is and if that money difference matters that much to you or it has a significant benefit to that. You know, like being able to afford another cruise, uh, being able to buy a drink package with it, uh, things of that nature. Marvin, thank you for the super chat. Can you bring a metal detector on board going on Harmony this season on Sunday? I don't believe so, Marvin. I believe it's on the prohibited items list. 
where's Pascal? Pascal, actually, I think you answered this question like the other day, didn't you? On the prohibited items list. Royal Caribbean prohibited items. So they have a list of items you're not allowed to. If you just Google Royal Caribbean prohibited items, you'll find it. And I am pretty sure. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's not on there. I thought it was on there. But it's not on the prohibited items list. So I guess not. Firearms, sharp objects, illegal drugs, CBD oil, candles, hoverboards, martial arts, hookah, ham radios, baby monitors, chemicals, flexor cords. I don't think I I don't see anything on here that says you can't, Marvin. Uh, I can't promise you they're not going to give you a hard time about it, but I that's not on the list. So I would print out that list and bring it. And be like, ah, show me where it says I can't bring that up. So I think you're okay. I think I can't promise you anything because I was you know. I don't work for the cruise line. I have no power in this regard. I'm more like the Queen of England. I just wave my hand and answer blog posts. Uh, let's see here. Abby says, I live near the Miami port. Can I ever just pack my bags and go to the port and get on standby list? No. Since 9-11, you can't. Pre-9-11, you could have done that. But they have to get the uh, the manifest in like two or three days before the cruise. So unfortunately, you cannot. Yeah, I know. That would be nice right there um cmt beat drops thank you for the super chat are kids that are 12 allowed to eat in a restaurant as part of playmakers or strictly 21 no they can absolutely eat there there's no age restrictions to eat a playmaker so you can bring kids in there no problem at all recommendations for any must visit restaurant san juan yeah um it would be um raices r-a-i-c-e-s r-a-i-c-e-s thank you for your generosity cmt beat drops i really appreciate you thank you thank you thank you um, what about medical exemptions for the COVID vaccine? They theoretically exist, but in practice, I don't think they're really granting them at all. But they theoretically, it's something you could apply for. But again, in, in um, uh, what's the word? In, um, well, I already said in practice, but, but anecdotally, it appears they're not really granting them. So I think you're probably wasting your time personally. But if you Google it, there's an email address and you can send some stuff, fill out a form or something like that. Uh, chasing with the RV, is it worth it to have a balcony on Alaska cruise? This is a really tough question because, you know, in the Caribbean, I'm really like, eh, balcony or not, whatever. Alaska is a tougher one. You know, Alaska, the problem with Alaska is, I mean, the answer is it's absolutely wonderful to have a balcony on Alaska cruise. The problem is the cost difference to move from an inside room to a balcony is way more usually than it is for a, than it is anywhere else because everybody wants to do a balcony. So it really depends on the cost because let's say Chasing Tail, it's $1,000 more to go up to a balcony in, in Alaska. I would say I'd rather spend that $1,000 on a really awesome excursion than I would on a balcony. But there's a lot of people who would tell you, no, Matt, you really should get a balcony room. It's a must do. I would. My counter argument is, yeah, but there's lots of public spaces on cruise ships, especially these days. Um, and it's different. A lot of the, a lot of the, I believe in my opinion, the recommendation, the old school uh, methodology or, or, or recommendation to get a balcony for an Alaska cruise as a must do was based on older cruise ships from a different generation that had far fewer balconies and public space was limited. Anyway, I feel like it's totally different now. So it depends on how much more it is. I, again, $1,000, I would use that money towards an amazing excursion. It's well worth it. It's going to be more worthwhile than your balcony, but hey, if money's not an object and or or you can afford it one way or another, like Matt doesn't matter to me. I, I can afford it one way or the other. Then yeah, go for the balcony. Absolutely. Uh, and I think we have another, another super chat coming in from Earl. Thank you, Earl. Uh, on Serenade of the Seas, was it worth getting a suite? And do you get anything extra for the bedroom? I'm, I don't know. I'm going on there on Sunday. So ask me Earl in three weeks, right? Cause next week I'll be there. Yeah. Three weeks. Ask me again in three weeks. But you do get anything extra. You do get, I will be able to answer the second party question. You get access to the concierge. With concierge is like your own little, um, your own version of guest services, which is really helpful. There's complimentary hors d'oeuvres. There's complimentary alcoholic beverages every evening um, in the suite lounge. So there are definitely benefits to being in a suite beyond the room, of course. So uh, let's see here. Dominic, let me take a drink of water and answer Dominic's question. I want the deluxe drink package, but our wife's son, but oh, sorry, I want the deluxe drink package, but our wife's don't drink it to be a waste. Is there any way to have Royal Caribbean put us together on the drink package, even though we're not in the same room? 
Oh, do you have like two rooms? No, uh, no. The only way you could work at Dominic is you would do this. You would you would have to on paper. You could do this actually. If there's just two of you, I mean, you could do a name swap. On paper, the husbands in one room, the wives in the other room. When you get on board the ship, after you board, go to guest services and swap and go tell them you want to swap cards, and they'll they'll understand. No problem at all. You could do that, but otherwise, that's your only recourse right there. How about we do? We already done an hour. What do you guys think? Another couple of minutes here, a little little overtime here on Roller Cream Blog on YouTube? Sure, man. Why not? All right, thanks, Josh. Let's do it. Uh, let's see here, Matthew. Great name. Booked our uh, first cruise in September for Oasis. Would you be able to give me a quick rundown on how the boarding process works? Saw a video that had tags on bags. Yeah. So I can't go through the whole thing, Matthew. But we do have a shameless plug. But it's going to be way more helpful than I can just rattle off here. Um. We did a video here on our YouTube channel called Boarding Day Tips, I think in 2022. But just search, go to our channel, search for Boarding Day Tips. It's a whole rundown of what you need to do. Basically, you put luggage tags on your on your luggage, drive to the port, drop them off, do the whole check-in process. When you get on board the ship, then you're going to um, do the e-muster drill. But there's more to that than just that. But check out the um, Boarding Day Tips um, a video that we created not too long ago. Brad Sweeney, thank you for this for the super chat. Sheba Dog in a combat position. I don't know. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. I appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Beth Light wants to know: is it worth it now to cruise the Bahamas with this weather? Yeah, absolutely. Remember, it doesn't rain all day in the Bahamas. There can be rain. I mean, we are in the rainy season, or we're about to enter the rainy season here in the tropics, but it doesn't rain all day. It's not like at home, you know, if you live up north somewhere where you get a rain and just the whole soaker. No, it'll start out nice in the morning, afternoon rainstorm passes through, and then it clears up. It's actually really nice. So I'd say the, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, Ryan, what is my favorite Diamond Lounge, and what level am I at? I'm Diamond Plus. I think Brilliance of the Seas. The Radiance Class Diamond Lounge is really beautiful. I love the view up there. Overtime. All right, everyone says yes to the overtime. Where, uh, did your boss approve this? Uh, yeah, I'll talk to the HR department. Jenna? No, Jenna's not the HR department, so I guess I got to ask myself on that one. Will there be a Memorial Day live stream? Uh, yeah, I mean, assuming I have internet. So full disclosure, I mean, as you know, I'll be on Serenade of the Seas on Monday, next Monday, and we'll be at sea. So internet permitting, I can't promise you there will be one. If we don't have one on Monday, I will absolutely do one on Tuesday when we're in a port in Alaska, and then the internet's way better. So internet permitting, the answer is yes. Uh, Matt, what is your home port? Or, uh, port Canaveral, Port Canaveral. Um, let's see, Tommy English in all capital letters, cooking, yo, you, you taught him well, cooking, yo, I hit diamond last week and have eight more book this year. I'll hit diamond plus on wonder in December. I'll definitely join you on a green blog group cruise this year. Looking forward to it, buddy. That is fantastic. What HR department, right? <laughs> Keith wants to know what drink should you get first on board? I would recommend the lava flow. With crack and run rum. Yep, absolutely. John Grachowski, thank you, John, for the super chat. 97 days to alert 134 to quantum. What do you tip the porters per bag? One to two dollars per bag is my usual go to um, 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 approach. Hey, John, there's your super chat right there. Um, yeah, one to two dollars a bag is pretty much uh, what I recommend. Uh, let's see. We have some more questions in here coming to us from, oh, we answered Matthew's question already. Uh, load says, do we need the water package? If we have the deluxe drink package, no, you, uh, bottled water is included. So you absolutely do not. That'd be a waste of money on that one. Um, next question is from, uh, Marina, Marina. Yeah. Marina says, I think you can get any coffee on the drink packages. Never had a problem. That is correct. Yes. Lafte's macchiatos totally fine right there Sherelle, where can i get a travel agent so i mean full disclosure this is a sponsor royalcaribbeanblog.com but i recommend mei travel so Sherelle, go to royalcaribbeanblog.com on the home page there's a giant yellow form fill out that yellow form and they'll contact you um let's see yeah, Marina says, by the way, uh, Marina's got all the opinions here. Balcony is always worth for Alaska. You can drink coffee and watch the water. I mean, it's really nice to have it, no question about it. So, 
Yeah, uh, this goes back to Marina answered Jeremy's question. What coffees are included in the ultimate d- beverage package? So uh, basically, um, any specialty coffee at Cafe Promenade or specialty restaurant, espresso, macchiato, latte, just basically, Jeremy, any coffee that doesn't come from a Starbucks kiosk. So hope that makes sense. Oh, thank you, Pascal. As the venerable prohibited items uh, uh, keeper of the list, metal detectors are not mentioned as a prohibited item. Awesome, awesome. Uh, next question is from Furious Styles. What a great name. Looking to board on my 21st birthday. Day three of the sailing will be my actual 21st, but I'm looking to do a solo trip. One of my chances of roller coaster letting me reserve before that. Oh, because they they there's a problem with... Um... Boy, I don't know the answer, Furious Styles. Um, I would... I don't know the answer. I would ask perhaps a travel agent to help you out there in that scenario. I don't know. Typically, and the emphasis, emphasis on typically, it's all about what your status is on boarding day, embarkation day. In that situation, you're still 20 years old. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Um, it seems silly, but um, Steve, is, yeah, I've got some midnight. Keep the ball rolling. All right. When I say overtime, I'm talking like 10 or 15 minutes, not two hours. All right. <laughs> A few more minutes, no singing. All right, well, in that case, um, <laughs> I've got to come up with some new songs to sing them there. <laughs> oh, love it. Uh, let's see. Next question. Zach wants to know, have I heard any more Icon news? Unfortunately not. No. Um, it's been all quiet on the Western Front. If uh, Josh Carruthers would tell you, if he's still in the chat, that for sure, guys, we'll get, qu- we'll get Icon of the Seas news when I'm in Alaska, when my internet is absolutely the worst, it will definitely break because that's my luck. John DiMuccio, favorite thing to do, play, favorite place to go in Aruba, uh, Palm Beach or Eagle Beach, John, is what I would recommend. Palm Beach or Eagle Beach, either one is fine. They're wonderful, beautiful beaches. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so you should get you should get cracking a sponsor of the website. Well, they're already getting a lot of free advertising anyway. I'm not sure they would really opt into that, but that would be pretty fun if they did that, right? To work for Royal Caribbean, I do not work for Royal Caribbean. I'm not a travel agent. Um, I just do this for fun. I mean, it is my job now. I used to say, I mean, I'm still doing it for fun, but um, no, I have no affiliation, no relationship with Royal Caribbean. Um, do you always recommend doing next cruise? Uh, Sherelle wants to know. If you're on board the ship, Sherelle, if you're sitting on board and you're saying, boy, this is a great time, let's book another cruise, yes. But if you're sitting at home and you want to book a cruise, don't wait to book. Book it now instead. The reason being that the benefits you're booking on board, the extra onboard credit, could be offset by the price increase between now and when you get on board the ship. So if you're on board the ship, yeah, absolutely. Why not? But if you're sitting at home now, then the answer is no. Uh, Paolo wants to know, is there an option to keep your luggage when we depart the ship? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Um, No problem at all. What is the Canadian version of EMED? I am not sure. I'm not sure if uh, I think Chantel is in is in Europe right now. So there goes my token Canadian friend. Um, I have no idea, my friend, if there is one that's available for you. I'm sorry. Potential site sponsors: Kraken, EMED, Patron, and Fireball. Three out of four are true. If Shannon never started her own website, then it would be Fireball. Yeah. Uh, Fanfic Rocks. Do you have a separate channel and live stream for your site about all other cruise lines? Um, yes, we do. Uh, cruise dot blog fanfic. So cruise dot like literally that's what it's not cruise blog.com don't go there cruise dot blog and we have a youtube channel and we have a website so yep check it on out uh we have time for one more two more questions guys then i gotta really gotta run out my my back is starting to hurt probably is my terrible posture uh speaking of which we should talk about shannon uh miss fireball herself how long do you have to onboard to cancel an excursion two days before i believe it's 48 hours shannon they've been Changing that around, but I think it's 48 hours, I think. And then I also find, like, Shannon, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, depending on a, how good of a story you give them, they might be able to work with you. But I believe officially the policy is 48 hours. Load, I'm so glad that you are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone said, Matt, I don't know everything. Believe I'm the first to admit I don't know everything. So uh, <laughs> here I am. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so this is overtime. All right, let's get to the real hard-hitting questions now. Is his name Tony Diaz or Charlie Brown? Everyone is always picking on him. Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. Why is everybody always picking on me? 
Man, that, I haven't heard that song in a long time. What a great one. If I knew more words, I'd sing it for you now. That's literally all the words I know. Uh, listen, Tony knows what he did, AD, okay? He's been around this YouTube chat long enough. He knows what he did right there. Uh, David says, is it true that kids have to be at least 12 to do an escape room? Um, I believe so. And I think the issue, well, first of all, I think any kid under 12, the escape room is going to be a complete waste of time on them because the puzzles are way going to be over their head. Now, I'm sure your kid is a genius, but um, <laughs> but but the puzzles are, your kid notwithstanding, I, I think from an aptitude standpoint, they'd be bored because it's just, it's, nothing's too complicated, but I think it's just a little too um, advanced, if you will. I'm not saying they couldn't enjoy it, but I think they just drew the line there just because it makes sense. I, that's my guess. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, Jody in all capital letters. If since it'll be hurricane season here in Florida in September, I'm wondering if I should leave a couple days early so I don't miss my flight. Yes, I always, 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 no matter if it's hurricane season or not, always come in at least one day ahead of your cruise. At least one. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tammy just reached crown and anchor level. Congratulations, which provides beverages in the cabin. How do we make our selection? Two ways to do it. You either call Royal Caribbean, again, Google Royal Caribbean crown and anchor and phone number, or when you get on board your ship next time, go to the loyalty ambassador and they can hook you up for your next sailing. Whichever one you want to do will work. Uh, teenage aviation is $3,000 for a four night, six people on Harmony out of Galveston, a good deal. It's not the cheapest deal in the world. Um, I don't know what kind of, first of all, I have no, what kind of cabin is it? Hold on, hold the phone. I don't even know what kind of room this is. Is this an inside room or like a giant suite? Uh, I'm guessing it's a suite. And my advice is don't put six people in one room, get two smaller rooms that connect. But it, it, first of all, it depends on the room type. Second of all, it depends on your budget. Like, is that a lot of money to you? Is that a little money to you? You know, I mean, it's $3,000. It's still not insignificant. But if it's for $3,000 for a star classroom, yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing deal. If it's $3,000 for a, I can't even imagine it's a balcony, but you know, it depends on the room type and, couple other things there. So I would say probably best case scenario, it's it's a it's not a bad price. I don't think, you know, if you're in a suite of some kind. So hope that makes sense. All right. One more question, guys, because my neck is truly broken now. It really hurts. <laughs> uh let's see. One last question. Where is one here? Yeah, Becky, always fly in at least one day ahead of time. Absolutely. All right. Last question is from Michael Gilbert. Matt, we need a drink package for a non-alcoholic. Can you ask for a cream, please? Oh, there already is one. Um, oh, wait a minute. Do you mean, I'm sorry. When you say non-alcoholics, you mean like, like you don't mean a non-alcoholic drink package. You mean a drink package in which you, an alcoholic drink package you only bar purchase for some days. Here's what I would tell you, Michael. Don't get a drink package. I mean, for 14 days, here's what you do. Take that $1,400. Wrap it up, you know, bring it, bring it on board the ship and bring it as cash, right? It's like, all right, this is our drinking money, guys. And drink as you see fit. At the end of the cruise, you go to the crew, you go to uh, guest services and you add it all up and you spent $900 on drinks. Put $900 down, you know, deposit it in your account. Now you've got $500 extra and your own drink package, the Michael Gilbert drink package. That's the way to go about it. In that scenario, that's the way to go about it. I think, you know, we, we talk so much about drink packages here, and I love them as well. But remember, you don't need to have a drink package. You can drink on your own as you go. Heck, Michael, you might even do better, you know, on some of the ports you're visiting, drinking over there as well. So there's a lot of strategies there, but that's my recommendation for you. And we have one last super chat coming in from Danny DiMatteo. Thank you, Danny, for the super chat. I appreciate all of you guys. If I did not answer your question, please feel free to go type your question over on our message boards at royalgreenblog.com or come join us again on our next live broadcast right here on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here. I want to say some thank yous to our super chatters. Danny, thank you. John, thank you. Brad, thank you. Earl, thank you. CMT, thank you. Marvin, thank you. Casey, thank you. Denise, thank you. Earl, thank you again. Jeff Luddick, thank you. DSM, thank you. Tony, thank you. Michael Gilroy, thank you. Jordan, thank you. Jester, thank you. L. Brog, thank you. Michael Gilroy, again, thank you. Anthony Harris, thank you. GS, thank you. Jordan, I think again, thank you. PNK, thank you. Brian, thank you. David, thank you. Teresa, thank you. PNK, thank you again. Tim, thank you. Diamond Dave, thank you. Mike Wolf, thank you. Scott Bearing, thank you. 
Rachel, thank you. Nook, thank you. Steven Z, thank you. Ainsley, thank you. Mark Capo, thank you. Will, thank you. Carl, thank you. Housebroken, thank you. Diamond Dave again, thank you. Ruthie, thank you. Larry, thank you. And Josh Carruthers, thank you so much for your generosity, guys. Appreciate each and every one of you. We will be live with you next time from Alaska or Vancouver. One of the two. I'm not sure where, but I'll be really honest with you. It could be Vancouver, but uh, it might be live with you in Alaska. Either way, we're going to be live with you from somewhere not here on a cruise ship on Saturday to the Seas over in the great Northwest somewhere. So until then, guys, have a, whoa, we got a, we got a, uh, one last super chat coming in from Desiree Hall. Cursive red lettering spelling out vlog. I can spell it back for you. V L O G. Unless my camera's backwards, then it's the other way. V L O G. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it mirrors my, my camera or not. Thank you, Desiree, for the super chat. Thank you to everybody for uh, hanging out tonight. Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. That's important as well. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Good night, everybody.